one big D here. It's time to review Mr. Robot, season one, episode nine, titled Mirroring or Mirroring. This is a spoiler review. If you have not seen the episode, go to USA.com slash Mr. Robot. Watch the full episode there. It should take me less than two minutes to recap the episode, give you my pros and cons and final score. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're watching this past the Sunday, and it's the Monday and many other days before, make sure to check out my Fear the Walking Dead series premiere review. Also, uh, I have a video, I should have a video out by the time this comes out a few hours later. Uh, of my fall TV show schedule review. It's going to be me talking about all the shows I'm reviewing and then a cool montage at the end with the music and um, TV. Woohoo! Fall 2015. Are you ready? Always the best time of the year. You know? Let's get right to it. Next week is the season finale of Mr. Robot. If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Robot's already been renewed for a second season. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Let's get right to it. First off, there's a flashback where Mr. Robot is in his store, Christian Slater, and basically this guy comes in and he's like, your son stole my 20 bucks. And it ended up being Elliot was there and he's in the back. He's about, yeah, you know, I don't know, about 11, 12 years old. And, you know, he's still always running about, but he's like, what do you want to see? Pulp Fiction? Oh! Oh! I just reviewed Pulp Fiction a few days ago, man. I was like, yes! <laughs> Pulp Fiction! Say what it did! Anyway, that's really awesome. I was like, ah, yes. 1994 is the year, baby. So, Elliot is mad now because he, he's like mad in his uh, apartment because Mr. Robot's there, Christian Slater. And he's like, I think we need to talk. And he's like, he's, he just starts cursing and everything, dude. Robbie Malik is on a roll, dude. And basically, he's like, you want answers? follow me. Almost like an X-Men Apocalypse, the Comic-Con trailer, when he's like, who the fuck are you? Come and see. Like, that whole part there, I was like, holy crap, man, that really got me down. Like, he's like, who are you? Come and see. I was like, yes, definitely. So, he had guys follow him the whole time. That's why I always saw guys following him. It's because Mr. Robot put him on him. Uh, they're on a train. Angela quit her job, and now she's going to, like, the lawyer's place, and she's like, can I have a job here? Nope. So that's going down. Tyrell is with his kid. He, he's a father now. Congrats, Tyrell. You know. Look, it's a baby boy. Baby boy. Another psychotic in the family. Tyrell gets fired, and I was like, he not, like, the guy knows that he just had a kid, but why don't you say, hey, I just had a kid. Don't let me go, but, you know. And I end up letting him go either way, so that sucks, dude. And he starts having a breakdown. Uh, Elliot and Mr. Robot are at the house where they grew up, the home, and apparently Mr. Robot threw him out a window. So now Elliot throws Mr. Robot out a window or pushes him off a window. He's like, "Let go." You're right. I should let go. <laughs> it's like, oh man. I thought Mr. Robot was dead. I was like, well. It's almost like that Spongebob moment. <laughs> Bye, everybody. I'll see you in therapy. Or something like that. I don't know. Um, so, yeah. He threw him out. They go to the cemetery, and the dad has been dead for a long time. That's the big twist, man. It's the sixth sense twist. <laughs> Mr. Robot is a ghost to Elliot. And, of course, it's still his dad, but he's like, you see, uh, you, you, you see Darlene and Angela running, and he's like, they're going to try to tear us apart. I love you, son. I'm going to sit down. And he's like, Elliot, who are you talking to? What? I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. This, ain't, this, this is not happening. This is happening. You knew it all along, didn't you? It's like... I was so sad because it was emotional when he was like, I love you. I thought a sniper was going to shoot him in the head or something, but I didn't know it was going to be a damn ghost. I was like, wow. Time to call Mulder and Scully. Either way, I mean, come on now. So, yeah, it's a ghost the whole time. Um, Angela and Darlene, they show up, like I said, and he's like, I am Mr. Robot. Nope, you're not Mr. Robot. Well, you act like a robot, but you're not Mr. Robot. There's only one Mr. Robot, and that's Christian Slater. Okay. That's 
one. Just want to point it out there, sir. Uh, so they're back on the train with Darlene. He created F Society, so it's almost like Fight Club. It's literally Fight Club, man. And he's like, he just like, and just fighting himself and everything. I mean, it's pretty crazy. Angela and Colby, they have a little talk, a little chit chat, you know, a little, come here. No, she's in her dad's house, and he's like, "Come on in, come on." This is, I live here. Come in here. How about that? You know, I'm not gonna go in there. So, um, yeah, that happens. Tyrell visits Elliot, and he basically joins him. He tells him info, and Elliot says. I wanted to save the world. And Tyrell's like, Elliot, first you have to save the cheerleader. Woohoo! If you don't know what that means, well then, God, you're a lost cause. I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> what did I think about Mr. Robot, man? Holy crap. Let me tell you the pros first off. Rami Malek as Elliot, dude. This was the episode where we saw him bursting out of his shell, man. He was cursing. He was yelling. He was screaming. He was throwing a fit. He was angry. He was sad. Every little bit of Elliot was coming out, man, in this episode. I mean, seriously... The acting of Rami Malek is genius, man. This guy deserves recognition. Just the way that he's been playing it all along, you know. Just like this. And... Stuff. No! And I'm not gonna scream out loud like he did, but he was really... Oh my gosh, you're like, dude. <laughs> I bet Christian Slater was like, God damn, this boy's a genius. I want to laugh right now because he's so good. Yeah, I know, Elliot. I thought it'd be, a, you know, it took you a long time to, 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 I thought you would, like, recognize me, but, you know, there's something wrong with you, boy. But, uh, for sure, Elliot and Mr. Robot himself, Christian Slater, fantastic, man. They better not. I know, but next week in the season finale, we do see that Mr. Robot's there. He better be in season two. Better be. Because, let's be honest, Christian Slater, other roles that he does... You know, you know, I'm not going to get into that, but, um, he should stick with this role, because he has a gold mine here. So, um, stay in that gold mine. So, yeah, Elliot, Mr. Robot, Tyrell, dude, the way Tyrell flips out in this episode, and he's really a bad father so far, he's not even with his kid, but... Just everything about Tyrell, and again, he does have, he's just he's psychotic overall, and the whole, when I was strangling her, the first ten seconds, they were, they were uncomfortable, but then everything goes dark. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude, I was like, I like you, you're really fun. He was really cool. He's a cool dude. He's a cool father. He's a cool father. The whole window scene was also really great. I love the way that happened. Uh, the opening with the whole Pulp Fiction and the Mr. Robot and it's like the Best Buy of the Year. I want to go to Best Buy. Sir, don't you see? We're the Best Buy of the Year. So um, you're already here, bitch. You know, just sort of like that. Uh, the whole twist and reveal, that really got me. That really got in my emotions there. That really got me crying. Uh, the dialogue, the writing of the show and the words that the actors say in the characters, it's just beautifully done. Uh, it, it's very clever. And the directing of this episode, every episode of Mr. Robot has stunned me with its directing. The directing is the way the angles are, and it, it blurs out the things that you don't need to see, and it focuses on the main Uh, it's a very intense episode, and also Gideon this episode, dude. Gideon did a few things, um, like breakfast in bed. I think that was, um, you know, pretty cool. Um, you know, well, we have to go get Elliot now, but still, you know, 
Gideon. So that was really cool. I think he, I think he, I think he's a cool character overall. Uh, even though he hasn't really been doing much this episode except just be that nerdy guy, but now he's, uh, he's, he's going after Tyrell. Mm, yes. So seriously, Gideon's awesome. I like the name Gideon too. Gideon here. What's your sit rep? Frog out. Now the cons. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I don't like the ending. I don't. The ending didn't get me excited because once I saw Tyrell, I was like, he's gonna, he's gonna want to join him. So it wasn't a surprise to me. I was like, he's gonna join him. Not gonna beat him up. He's gonna join him. And that's cool. It's cool that Tyrell's gonna join him, but. Now that Mr. Robot's really gone, like, he's, he was never real, I'm kind of thinking to myself, you know, like, what's the point, you know? Um, so the ending was kind of, eh. Angela and the lawyers, I don't care for that, I don't, like, Angela, she's a good actress, I, I like the way that she's been playing her role, but I just don't care. I just don't. You know, and you know, don't care. I like a few. I love the whole Kobe scene and everything. Like she's a good actress, and she, she, she I like Angela. I just. I don't care with the lawyer and everything. Like, we could have picked a better looking lawyer, like a more sexier one, but, you know, I mean, it's just. Ugh. Uh, also, a part of it. A part of it lost its feeling for me. Uh, there's always that Mr. Robot feeling when you're watching it, and then a part of this episode just. Parts of it lost its feeling. I'm like, this ain't a Mr. Robot episode. And then it got to it, like, okay, now we're back to it. Oh, no, that was not. Just for me personally. Overall, I'm going to give this episode, guys, of Season 1, Episode 9, Mirroring for Mr. Robot in B+. Plus, a B+, plus, guys. Uh, it's a really, really good episode. It's on the verge of being naturally great. It could have been a great episode as, you know, just a few of those cons there. But I, I really enjoyed it overall, and I can't wait for the season finale. I'm very sad. I'm glad that this show's 10 episodes because, like, The Blacklist, I, I enjoy The Blacklist, but... Not a 20 episode run. Just give it a 10 episode run. Not, no more with these 20 episodes, dude. Keep that with Arrow and Flash, but not, 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 not NBC shows and other shows like that. No, no, no 20 episodes. Stop it, man. Keep it a 10 minimum, 13. That's it. No, no more 25 and all that. Just don't need that. Now for X Files, the new one. Give it a 30 episode run, but man. No, six wrong. Hope all of you enjoyed. Comment down below. Again, let me know what you think about Mr. Robot. Tell me your pros, cons, final score. See you all for the season finale. May the spot be with you always.